Right, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue with chapter four on transient heat conduction. Transient means changes as a function of temperature. Paragraph 4.1, we did the lump system method, the methodology, and what is important to remember there is we can calculate the characteristic length and from it the build number, and if the build number is smaller than 0.1, then it will give us an accurate answer. Normally, it, will, it works very well for uh, small, any geometry which are full, small in dimension and if the thermal conductivity is high. Uh, then, the next paragraph is 4.2, more complicated, where we look at three types of geometries, uh, large plane walls, long cylinders and spheres. And uh, what was given there in the textbook and what I've tried to cover in the previous lecture is the methodology that was followed. The methodology was that to solve the temperature there are actually eight variables and Fourier did go and actually reduce it to a partial differential equation by non-dimensionalizing some of the terms so that there are only three variables to solve. And he solved that by using the separation of variable methods, looking at the eigenvalues, etc., and the result is table 4.1 that summarizes the exact solution for us. And the exact solution is the cases, and we should remember, is the cases for n equal 1 to infinite, which means you have to calculate a large number of terms before you will get to a converged solution. But fortunately, people who have done it a lot have uh, found that if tau, the non-dimensionalized time, is larger than 0.2, you only need to use the first term, n equal to 1. And for that, the equations was given in your textbook as equations 4.23 4.25, and then another simplification is the cases where we, would, where we would like the temperature in the center of a plane wall, a cylinder, or a sphere, and then the equations becomes more easy. What is also important in table 4.1 is underneath it, the fine print, and I'm always going to remind you about the fine print in the textbook. So, with the previous lecture, we did this uh, boring piece of work, which was all theoretical, and there wasn't time for any problems. So, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to solve, do some problems to make it more practical, and so that you can understand it better. And there are examples in the textbook, and I'm specifically not going to solve them, because they are there, and they're quite easy, I'm going to use some of the other problems so that you've got some additional examples to work with. And the problem I'm going to select is problem 4.46, so it's in the back of your textbook. However, I am going to change some of the dimensions of this specific problem. And this problem says, in a meat processing plant, two centimeter thick stakes, so 20 millimeters thick, thick stakes, the properties are given. They are initially at a temperature of 25 and they should be cooled by passing them through a ref refrigeration room at minus 11 degrees Celsius. The heat transfer coefficient on both sides of the stakes is 9 watts per square meter Kelvin. If both surfaces um, of the stakes are to be cooled to 2 degrees Celsius, determine how long the stakes should be kept in the refrigeration room. So we've got the steak. Let's suppose that is the steak. And it is 20 millimeters in thickness. They do not give the other dimensions, so I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it to a geometry like this of an average thickness of 20 millimeters, a nice thick stake. That dimension is 200 millimeters and that dimension is equal to 100 millimeters. And 
It is initially, the initial temperature is equal to 25 degrees Celsius, so typical room temperature, and then it is going to, put in a going to be put into a refrigerator where the temperature is equal to minus 11 degrees Celsius. And they ask us, how long will it take before the surface of this steak, let's call it TS, is equal to 2 degrees Celsius, the time required. So, in terms of the three geometries that we did so far, there are three types. It's the plane wall, the cylinder, and the sphere. And I hope you will agree with me that it is definitely not a cylinder or a sphere. Uh, we can make the approximation approximately that it's a plane wall. And the properties which are given in the textbook is equal to a K value of 0.45 watts per meter kelvin and i get this question quite a lot in the first few lectures that would be also 0.45 watts square meter degree celsius so the kelvins and the celsius are the same if we work with conduction heat transfer and convection heat transfer it's only with radiation where we need to change the temperatures to kelvin alpha is 0.91 multiplied by 10 to the minus 7 square meters per second. Cp is equal to 3.54 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And that would also be equal to 3.54 kilojoules per kilogram degree Celsius. Exactly the same. And the density would be 1,090. We can expect it. About the same as water, approximately 1,000 kilograms per square meter. And I think those are all the properties. So let's go and start by calculating the characteristic length of the stake. The volume divided by the surface area. The volume is equal to 0.1, 100 millimeters, multiplied by 200 millimeters, multiplied by the thickness, which is 25 millimeters, divided by the surface on the outside. Let's first start with this surface. And there are two of them, so it is two times 0.025 multiplied by 0.1 plus two times <coughs> Ah, sorry, okay. Yep. Yeah. 20. So 20. See, I need a, a thicker steak. 20 moles plus 0.2 times 2 times. Again, 20 moles uh, multiplied by 200. It will now be this area, surface area on this side. And there are two of them, so 2 times that. And then 2 times this surface here. This big surface. 2 times... 0.1 multiplied by 0.2 and that is equal to a characteristic length of 9.09 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3 meters. Let's calculate the Biot number and the Biot number is equal to H multiplied by the characteristic length divided by the thermal conductivity. The heat transfer coefficient was given as, mm, I didn't write it down, but the heat transfer coefficient was equal to 9 watts per meter Kelvin, and that is also 9 watts per meter degree Celsius. 
So it is 9 multiplied by 9.09 .09 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3 divided by the thermal conductivity 0.45 and that is a build number of 0.018. which is then smaller than 0.1, which means that the lump system method can be used. Okay, now the lump method says that the non-dimensionalized temperature, that is the temperature minus T infinite, divided by the initial temperature minus the infinite is equal e to E to the minus Bt and B is equal to minus 2.566 multiplied by 10 to the minus 4. T is the only unknown. Okay. I should have solved B as equal to the heat transfer coefficient, the surface area, divided by rho Cp um, and Lc. So all these values are given, the heat transfer coefficient, the areas, the rho Cp and the Lc, and that works out as this value, 2.56 multiplied by 10 to the minus 4. Okay, now we can solve this equation. We want to know how long it's going to be before the surface of this type is at 2 degrees Celsius. 2 minus minus 25, the environment temperature of the refrigerator, Hold it for me, yes, please. Okay. 2 minus minus 25. Uh, the initial temperature is 25 minus, mm, minus uh, 11. No, sorry, minus 25. Just a minute, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. 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 As then equal to e to the minus 2.56 multiplied by 10 to the minus 4 multiplied by t. from which we can solve that the time is equal to 3,969 seconds, which is equal to about 66 minutes, a little bit more than an hour. Right, there were some questions here about the value of beta. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I know that this is not correct. I know I changed some of these values a little bit for a reason. And what is the reason? <laughs> Sorry? I beg your pardon? The fine print. Yes, you're right. The reason is the fine print. Remember I told you that with a lump system approach, you can only use it if beta is smaller than 0.18. Now, 
this value should actually be approximately 0.18. <laughs> Why? Because to get it smaller than 0.1, I had to change the dimensions to about 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters. So a very, very small piece of steak. But I want to lead you all into the trap. And the trap is, this is all incorrect. Okay? It's all incorrect. For two reasons, yes, the one is, if you go and calculate the Biot number, it is actually 0.18, so it is larger than 0.1, so that should lead you, but even before you do that, even if you, before you do that, you should look at this problem and hopefully remember that the lump system approach typically works only very well for small geometries and high thermal conductivities. This is, state is not really small. It is maybe relatively small. <laughs> there are some larger ones in Texas and Argentina. But <clears throat> in general, the state is not that small, firstly. And secondly, the thermal conductivity of meat is not high. Um, high is typically for copper and stainless steel, that's 300, 400, up to diamond, 1,100. So, please, this thing of using this characteristic length is incorrect, because you were correct, we have to look at the fine print. So if you can look at the fine print, I hope you can read it, but let's see if you can. Um. Oh, there you go. Okay. Here at the bottom, it says the build number should be calculated as HL divided by K. The build number. is HL divided by K, and the L is that distance. Okay, and in this case, the stake is 20 millimeters in thickness. Okay, so L is only 10 millimeters. Two L is the thickness of the stake. It says very clearly for us in terms of the derivation of the equations and getting an analytical solution, it's easier to refer to the thickness of this stake as two L. Okay. So therefore, you can see that the geometry is going to be much different than this calculation of the characteristic length. So the correct approach is to say that the build number is equal to the heat transfer coefficient, which is 9, the characteristic length, which is equal to 0.01, 10 millimeters thick, divided by the thermal conductivity, which is 0.45, and that gives us a build number of 0.2. And you cannot use this Biot number and this one. They don't talk to each other, <laughs> remember. Right, now we've got the Biot number. And then, if you now look at this equation that you should use for the plain wall, that is the equation. And there it gives you the roots that you need to solve. Now that can be very complicated, but it's actually very easy. Because in table 4.2, in table 4.2, there we can get for a build number is equal to 0.2, that the lambda is equal to 0.4328. And A1 is equal to 
311. Okay? And we are going to assume that tau, the non-dimensionalized time, is larger than 0.2, and that we can only therefore use one term. We don't know yet, but we're going to do the calculation and see. So the equation says the temperature, which is a function of x and t, minus t infinite divided by the initial temperature minus t infinite is equal to a1 e to the minus lambda square multiplied by tau, the cos of lambda 1x divided by L, if we only use the first term. Okay, this is the temperature. We want to know how long it is going for the surface temperature to drop to 2 degrees Celsius, minus, minus 11, 25, the initial temperature of the stake, minus, minus 11, minus 11, the temperature in the refrigerator, is then equal to A1, which is equal to 1.0311, E to the minus lambda 1, which is 0.4325, square multiplied by tau, A1 E to the minus lambda, this lambda, 0.4325, to 8, so it's a little bit messy, multiplied by the cos of lambda 1, which is 0.4325, or 8, multiplied by x. And the x we are interested in is measured from here, so that would be x equal to L. And L is 10 millimeters, 0 0.010, divided by 0 0.001. And we can see these two terms actually cancel each other. And then we can solve the non-dimensionalized time, which is equal to 5.085 which is larger than 0.2. So the one term approach is valid. We can use the approach where we only calculate the first term. The non-dimensionalized time is equal to alpha t divided by L squared of uh, uh, sigma, sorry, sigma is 5.085, the non-dimensionalized time, is equal to alpha, which is 0.91 multiplied by 10 to the minus 7 multiplied by T divided by 0.02. And the time in seconds is equal to 5587 five, seconds, and that is about 93 minutes. So it will take about 93 minutes for the temperature of the steak on the surface to drop to 2 degrees Celsius. Yep. The question, if I heard you correctly, is will this work if the heat transfer is only in one dimension? Is that right? Yes. So this is specifically, if you look at the original equations and the derivation of it, that was the assumption. 
it is one dimensional heat transfer. So all the heat transfer would be in one dimension only and that would be in that direction. And then again, it will be the heat transfer rate in that direction and of course in that direction. And they would be opposite and the same because this temperature and that temperature is exactly the same. And this initial temperature was constant. So the temperature distribution as a function of time is going to look something like that. That is going to be the two degrees. That's going to be minus 25, just the other way around. That's the negative side there. And that would be minus 25. No, sorry, that wouldn't be minus 25. Two degrees like that on the surface. Something like that. So we do not consider the heat transfer from this side and that side and from the other side. So it's an assumption. And that is why, that is why paragraph 4.2 says long plane walls. So this should actually be, the longer it becomes, the stake, the more accurate the solution will be. And the same with the cylinder. The sphere, of course, is not relevant in that case. It's just a sphere. Another question? I beg your pardon? 4L squared in the dimensions top. Yes. Um, 0.02 rather than 0.01 squared. Oh, sorry, I'm crazy. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So L squared is, of course, 0.01 squared like that. Is that right? Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, that, that is the first problem. Let's look at the second one. In terms of geometry, which actually now solves the thing of one-dimensional heat transfer. And in this case, the problem, the solution of the problem will be much more accurate. And the problem we are going to consider now is problem 469. For those of you who has parents here in the Mapumalanga area, who has farms with fruit, this problem would be very relevant to you. Citrus fruits, like oranges, are very susceptible to cold weather. And as you know, typically oranges in the winter time, and, ex and they are susceptible to extended exposure to sub-freezing temperatures, and it can destroy them. Now consider an eight centimeter diameter orange, so 80 millimeters, that is initially at 15 degrees Celsius, a typical average winter day. And a cold front moves in one night and the ambient temperature suddenly drops to minus 6 degrees Celsius with heat transfer coefficient of 15 watts per square meter Kelvin. Using the properties of water, so for fruit and for body meat, etc., typically about 80% of it is water. In your tables, you're not going to have the exact properties for fruits and meat, etc but we use typically the properties of water, that's very close. And using the properties of water for the orange and assuming the ambient conditions to remain constant for four hours before the cold front moves out, determine if any part of the orange will freeze that night. Solve this problem using analytical one-term approximation method, not the Heisler charts. So this is a real practical problem that can typically happen with an orange farmer. And yes, an orange, typically about 80 millimeters in diameter. And its initial temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. And then the temperature drops to minus 6 degrees Celsius. A cold front moving over the area. Heat transfer coefficients would be about 15 watts per square meter Kelvin. 
that would also be 15 watts per square meter degree Celsius, exactly the same. And they want to know what would be the surface temperature after four hours when the cold front moves over. Something like this can, of course, destroy a crop if the cold front is for a long enough period of time and all the temperature is very low. Good. Where do we start? We start with the fine print. So if we go back to table 4.2, there's the solution for a sphere, and they give the build number as alpha t divided by r0 square. r0 is the radius, which is 40 millimeters, and there's the Fourier number and all the properties that is of interest. But before we do that, let's just go and get the properties, typically in table A9, the back of your textbook. Uh, you need to start to know your textbook very well for the tests and exams. I would recommend that you put in some tabs, typically with the tables, because you're really going to use them a lot. So you need to know where are the properties of everything. And there, for a temperature of 5 degrees Celsius, you can get the thermal conductivity, which is equal to 0.571 watts per meter Kelvin, which is also equal to 0.571 meters watts per meter degree Celsius. It's the same. The density would be almost 1,999.9 kilograms per square meter. The CP value is equal to 4205 joules per kilogram Kelvin. And from this, we can calculate alpha, which is the K value divided by rho and CP. Okay, K is equal to 0.571 divided by the density, 999.9, divided by the CP, which is 4205, and the result is an alpha value of 1.358, multiplied by 10 to the minus 3 square meters per second. And take note. The build number is equal to the heat transfer coefficient R0 divided by K. So it is not equal to the heat transfer coefficient, the characteristic length divided by the K. That is only valid for a lump system approach. So here they specifically give us R theta. So the heat transfer coefficient is 15. The radius is 40 millimeters. Half of the diameter, which is 80 millimeters, divided by the thermal conductivity, which is equal to 0.571. And that is then equal to a build number of 1.051. Again, table 4.2, if you've got your textbook here and or you can see well enough that you can see on the overhead what the value is of lambda 1 and A1, there you can see on the left side the build number is equal to uh, 1.051. So you will see that that build number is not there but if you look at a build number of equal to 1, build number is equal to 1, then lambda 1 is equal to 0.8603, and lambda 1 
is equal to 1.2403. You agree? No, you shouldn't agree. Okay. It's a classical mistake that many students would make. Take note, the first two columns is for a plain wall, the next two is for a cylinder, and the eight is the units of values for the sphere. So for a lambda of equal, a build number of equal to one, those are the two values that we should be interested in. Okay. So just be careful. So from that table, we can get lambda 1 is equal to 1.5708, and A1 is equal to 1.2732. Yep, I'm going to answer. Um, oh yeah, That's a good question. Okay, why did I use a temperature of five degrees? I forgot to mention to you that typically the question is should you now use the properties at 15 or at minus six? So normally we take about the average of the two and we call that the film temperature. So if we look at the average of the two, it's about 15 uh, plus minus 6 divided by 2, which is about at 4.8 degrees on average. So 5 degrees is approximately the average. That is why I choose the properties at 5 degrees Celsius. Does that make sense? The question that was asked to me with the previous lecture is, if we look at the build number, which is equal to 1.051, then the build number of 1 is given. So the question was, should you do interpolation? I'm going to answer that just now. And then also, if we look at this problem of getting the average temperature at 4.8, degrees Celsius. The properties are not given at 4.8, but maybe at 0, 10, or something like that. Now, in this course, uh, we are going to agree that you use, that you apply your mind. What does that mean? <laughs> it means I want you to start thinking like an engineer. So, for purposes of showing to me that you know what to do, you can use the closest one. However, discretion is very important. So if you look, for example, here at the build number of 1, then you can see between 1 and 2, or even between 0.9 and 2, the values do not change that much. You see? Okay? However, Let's suppose the build number is 70. And you look at that. Then for both those cases, it's actually not going to matter because the two values are very close to each other. But you are going to get to values where there are big differences. <laughs> and when there's big differences, that's what you're going to do in industry also. Then you're going to do linear interpolation. You need to apply your mind. Okay. Linear interpolation will also, in terms of when to do it and when not, the other criteria that you can use is it depends how accurately you want to design. So if you design in an industry application, in many cases you will be lucky if you get to an answer of plus or minus 20%, especially in heat transfer. At best, in laboratory conditions where things are very, very well controlled, we can get to accuracies of plus or minus 10%. Now, in most cases in industry, when you do a design, it is to, get to determine an order of magnitude of something that's needed or needs to be uh, ordered, etc. So if you, for example, need a chiller 
and you're going to calculate a value of about 110 kilowatts, most probably you're going to buy a 100 kilowatt chiller because it will do approximately what you want. Uh, but you're not going to use a 10, you're not going to buy a 10 kilowatt chiller. However, if you are tendering against another company where there are specifications that you need, that you want to meet, then normally you really want to work very accurately. Because if you work very accurately, then you can be sure about your answer. And if you're sure about your answer, in many cases, you can specify something smaller that will do the job. And normally, smaller would, you, would mean less material, lower costs, etc. And that's going to make you competitive. And also, when you design products, if, you, if you're in a company that, for example, uh, designs and manufactures heat pumps, then you're competing against the other people all the time. So if you've got a design, you want to be sure about the capabilities and the capacities of those units. Then in those cases, you're going to use all the digits, you're going to do linear interpolation, everything where required, because you want to work very accurately. Okay, so that's the answer in terms of using linear interpolation. You need to use your judgment. Alpha is the non-dimensionalized time. It's alpha t divided by r0 squared. Where do I get it? In the fine print. Underneath the table, most probably it's going to be too small for you, but there it is given how it should be calculated. The non-dimensionalized time is alpha t divided by r0 squared. Okay, alpha is equal to 1.2. 358 multiplied by 10 to the minus 7 multiplied by the time um, and that is 4 hours multiplied by 3600 seconds divided by the radius which is 40 millimeters okay and the result is a non-dimensionalized time of 1.222, which is larger than 0 0.2, which means the one term approximation is valid. You've got it? Okay, solving the problem. If we look at the equations that were simplified, there it gives us the non-dimensionalized temperature for a sphere if tau is larger than 0.2. So that's the equation that we're going to use. The non-dimensionalized temperature for the sphere is equal to the temperature at RT minus T infinite divided by Ti minus T infinite equal to A1e to the minus lambda 1 square multiplied by tau, the sin of lambda 1 r divided by r0 divided by lambda 1 r divided by r0. Right, solving this, this is the unknown that we want to solve. So let's call it the temperature of the surface, Ts. Now here it is on the sketch, it's equal to the surface temperature Ts minus the temperature of the cold front, the environment, which dropped to minus six degrees Celsius. The initial temperature of oranges were 15, so it's 15 minus minus 6 is equal to, now we just need to do the substitutions, 1.2732 e to the minus 1.5708 square 
multiplied by lambda, which is equal to 1.22, multiplied by the sine, sin of 1.5708, 0 0.040 divided by 0 0.040 because the radius is on the outside, is at 40 millimeters, R0 is the radius, and that is divided by 1.5708, again 0 0.040, divided by 0 0.040, so that's equal to 1. And if we solve this long equation, then it reduces to the surface temperature, will drop to minus 5.1, 5.2 degrees Celsius. So, conclusion is, the oranges, are going to freeze. So the poor farmer is going to use, lose his whole crop. Questions? Does the initial temperature, does it have to be location specific? Can it be any initial temperature? The initial temperature is not location specific in terms of, ladies and gentlemen, the assumption that was made when we looked at the plain wall, we made the assumption that the temperature is constant right through the body. Okay. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? If not, then thank you very much, and then I'll see you again tomorrow.